In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have a successfully completed pretest count as the final score in your Adobe Captivate project. So a couple months ago, I had a viewer reach out to me with a bit of a challenge. And, uh, you know, fortunately, I was able to come up with a solution for her. And I thought I would share it with all of you today. The challenge that she had was that she needed um, an Adobe Captivate project that had a pretest that could also count as the final score if users were successful. So in other words, users would complete the pretest if they got an 80, a 90, or a 100% result, they were done. That was it. They didn't need to see the rest of the course content and subsequently write a final exam. The pretest would become their final score. So this is something that isn't inbuilt into Adobe Captivate, but I thought, you know, maybe there's an opportunity to come up with something here. Uh, I didn't instantly know a, the solution for this, so I've kind of come up with a solution. And uh, again, I thought I would share it with all of you today. Now, while this is not overly complicated, the project does contain many variables and advanced actions. So I'm going to make this project file available for you to download for a small fee from my website. You can click the card that will appear here to navigate to navigate to where you can get this file. Also, this project requires uh, certain settings in your preferences window, and I'll go over that now. So right off the bat, let's go into our preferences window. To do that, click the edit drop down and go down to preferences. Alternatively, you can press shift F8, and that will bring the preferences window up here. You're looking for the category of quiz and the subcategory of settings. The, uh, the quiz needs to be optional, and we also need the quiz to be branch aware. Uh, the reason for this is that there are several slides that uh, if the user navigates to those slides, we want the, um, the range or the uh, scope of the quiz to be limited to just those slides. Uh, otherwise, there's going to be a whole bunch of question slides that if not navigated to will count as wrong answers and we don't want that to happen. Otherwise, everything else can be however it is that you normally set up your course. Uh, let's click OK and get into this. So these pretest questions are a little bit more complicated than regular pretest questions. The reason that they are so is I had to come up with a custom solution I couldn't use the regular question types. I had to make them myself for this to work. And what we have is we have a variable called VAR underscore pretest underscore score. And this will keep track of the pretest score for you. Um, the current value at the beginning of this course is that this variable will be a value of zero. Now, this particular uh, project, like I said before, requires a great deal of variables and advanced actions. So there's an advanced action for every single checkbox, as well as every single submit button. And there are variables for each of those checkboxes as well. And also variables and uh, advanced actions for each of the radio buttons. So in this case, I have uh, 10 questions and four possible answers on most of them. So it's quite a few. It's like in the range of 30 or 40. There's a couple true or false questions in there as well. But let me show you how this works so you understand the logic that's occurring behind this. We'll start with the, uh, the checkbox question. So if you think back to how a checkbox works, I can check any combination of these and they'll remain checked. I can click them again and uncheck them if I don't believe that they're part of the right answer. So I need to build that logic into each one of these buttons. Now these buttons are simply smart shapes that, um, that I've applied a fill, a graphic fill image. Uh, and if you take a look at the state view, you can see that there's two possible states. There's the normal default state, which is unchecked. And then there's the selected state here, which shows a check mark in the middle of it. 
I only had to make one of these and I had to make one of the radio buttons uh, and then I just duplicated it as I need it. But as you can see here, I've given each one of them a unique name. It's really strongly encouraged that for this project to be successful, everything has to have a clear and easy to understand naming convention. So this is pre-test, which is what the PT stands for. Zero one is the first question. And this is the first answer, A01. And of course, the other answers on this page, A02. A03 and A04. Now if I go into the variables uh, window here, we can see that I have variables for all of this stuff as well. I have that pretest score, but I also have pretest one, and I have a variable pretest one underscore answer one, pretest uh, uh, zero one, answer two, answer three, answer four, and so on. So again, it's a lot of variables. And we'll just hit the submit button here. And if you take a look, a lot of advanced answers. So a uh, bit of trial and error on my part here. Uh, so there might be some extra uh, unused uh, advanced actions and maybe some unused variables because I was develop, uh, developing this as I went until I figured out how it was going to work. So there might be some extraneous stuff in there, but don't worry about that. As long as you don't select it, it won't affect your project. So let's take a look at the advanced action associated with one of our checkboxes so you can see how that works. We go to the Properties Inspector under Actions you'll see there's a script just for this button here, PT01 Answer 1. So I'm going to bring that up and we'll see what's involved there. So pretty straightforward. This is a conditional action and it's basically asking Adobe Captivate if the variable, right, and this variable is associated with this checkbox is equal to zero. In other words, is this unselected? And if the answer is correct or yes, uh, we're going to assign a value to that same variable of one, and we're going to change the state to be selected. So in other words, if this action is run, it's because I've clicked this, and it's going to change it to checked off. Any other situation, and it's going to assign the value of zero, in other words, not checked, and change the state back to normal. So if I sit here and click on this a bunch of times, it will go check, unchecked, check, unchecked. That's what this advanced action does. And a similar advanced action exists for each one of these items here. Because of course, with a, a checkbox question, you can check as many as all of these checkbox items as you wish. Now, where it gets a little more complicated is in the submit button because we want to assign a value to our pretest score or increment our pretest score by a value of one if the user selects the correct answers. Now, in this case, the correct answers are English and French. Okay, so if I hit submit, that's what it's going to be checking for. So we have the, again, a conditional advanced action. So this is PT01 underscore submit. That's what I've called it, but you can call it whatever makes sense for you. So I'm looking at if the variables associated with all these checkboxes are equal to zero for the first one, one for the second one, zero for the third one, and one for the fourth one. In other words, the correct combination. Then we're going to increment the, the pretest score, the variable for the pretest score, by one. In other words, you get it right. And then we're going to go to the next slide. If it's anything other than here, the else option runs. And we're just going to go to the next slide. In other words, we're not going to add anything to the pretest score. You got zero for this question, just let's move on. And that's how that question works. Now let's take a look at a radio button question. And a radio button means that there's only one correct answer. In this case here, when did Canada gain full sovereignty from the United Kingdom? The correct answer is surprisingly 1982. So let's take a look at the advanced action for this. Uh, and again, you can see here there's a script for just for 
pretest 02 answer 4. So let's take a look at what's involved there. It's a little more complicated uh, simply because when you click on a radio button, you need to unselect all the other radio buttons. So that's why you're seeing a lot more lines here. But it really isn't doing much more, logically speaking. So here we're asking the question, is this radio button already selected? No. Then what we want to do is we want to assign the value of 0 to the first three variables and assign a value of 1 to the variable associated with this last radio button. But we also want to change the state of the first three variables to normal. That's what these three lines are. And then change the state of the last answer to selected. And in this case here, there's no else option because there's no reason, you know, if you're clicking this, that's what you're doing. You're not unselecting or doing anything else with anything else. That's all single, a single set of logic for, for the radio button. So a lot more text here, but no else required here. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense for you. So as you proceed through the, the, the test, this variable is going to increase in value as you get correct answers. Until you finally get down to this slide here, and this is a simple slide that I've uh, set up here and there's an on enter advanced action called pass navigation now let's take a look at the uh, advanced action for that and this is really simple what i've used is four different decision points within a conditional action so how decisions work is that you know simultaneous to one another we're going to look at you know is or in this case, if the pretest score is equal to 10, do something. If it's equal to 9, do something else. If it's equal to 8, do something else. And if it's below 8, less than 8, it's going to do a fourth thing. Now let's take a look at what those things are. It's very simple. It's going to jump to a slide that I've just called 100%. This will jump, you know, if you get a score of 9 out of 10, it will jump to a slide called 90%. And in the case of 8 out of 10, it will jump to a slide called 80%. And if, if it's anything lower than that, it's just going to jump to slide 16. I didn't give it a, a name, but it's basically the fail slide. So let's close that and let's take a look at what's happening on these slides. So here's the 80% slide. Here's the 90% slide, here's the 100% slide, and lastly, regular course content slide. So in other words, if you're seeing this slide, you did not successfully complete the pretest, and you've got to complete the rest of the course. But if you have arrived on the 80, 90, or 100% slide, you can actually hit the submit button to submit your score as your final score. Now, how did I do that? Well, that's why there's three slides. So let's assume for a moment that you've achieved a score of 80%. There's the variable that has this value of 80, but there's no way to pass on the value of that variable to the actual quiz info points scored variable, which is what uh, Adobe Captivate uses to keep track of your score. But what you can do is you can arrange or you can set up certain objects on your slide to have a value associated with them. So this submit button here, if I select it and I take a look at the properties inspector, down here at the bottom I've got include in quiz. We're going to assign points of 8. In other words, 8 out of 10. We're going to add to the total and we're going to report those answers. So we're basically saying this submit button becomes your final quiz. But we need some wrong answers for it to actually be a value of 80%. So what I've done is I've put a very tiny object on the screen, which is this tiny, you can just make it out here. Um, it's a little tiny button, and I'm going to uncheck the hand cursor and disable the click sound. So I don't want people to really know it's there, but it's actually included in the quiz as well, and it has a value of 2. 
So if I click on the submit, which will navigate me to the quiz results slide, but I'm obviously not going to click on this little tiny button that I don't even know is there, I'm going to get 8 out of 10 because 8 plus 2 equals 10 and the submit button has a value of 8 so I will get a score of 80 percent. Similarly I have the same thing on the 90 percent slide so there is a submit button here worth 9 and way up in the upper left hand corner in the opposite spot and I'm going to uncheck the hand cursor and the click sound there's a value of 1 a little click box that's a value of one. It's actually a button. And that's so tiny that, you know, the odds of someone clicking it are pretty in, uh, pretty amazingly small. And this will give them a value of nine out of 10 on their final quiz. 100 is easy. 100, of course, you could just have a value of 10 and there's nothing else required because 100% is 100%. So I just need to click the one button. And what's going to happen at that point, it's going to skip past the final quiz all the way down to the quiz results slide where it will report to you either 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, or 100%. And that will get passed on to your learning management system. Let's do a preview and see how this works. So we'll just do an HTML5 preview here. And again, remember this works primarily because you've made the course branch aware, because otherwise, if you simply skipped over all of those quiz questions in your final quiz, you would be getting wrong answers for those. And that's not the case here. When you turn on branch aware, this whole thing works. So here we have, there's their quiz value there. And here is our pretest question value here. So Let's get this right. It's English and French. We're going to hit submit. So I got one out of 10 so far. Uh, when did Canada gain sovereignty in 1982? I'll just do as many of these correct as I can. Um, 1767? No, I got that wrong. Uh, who is the official head of state of Canada? It's Queen Elizabeth II. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. Justin Trudeau is our Prime Minister, at least at the time that this course is being done. When did Canada start using the Maple Leaf? 1965, I believe. Yep. Including its waters, Canada is the second largest country in the world. True. Uh, true. And so I've got 8 out of 10 right now. Let's, uh, let's go with that. I'm going to get this one purposely wrong. So now I'm on that 80%. So notice that my quiz results are still showing a value of zero because I haven't done anything yet. So I've achieved a score of 80% on my pretest. We've arrived at this page, so I know that that's true. And now if I hit the submit button, right, the submit button is worth eight out of 10. There we go. I'm on my quiz results page. I've got a score of eight out of 10. And I can now exit the course because I've successfully completed the course just through my pretest. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was cool, helpful, useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. In addition, you can download the course project files directly from my website if it's something you'd like to take apart and play with and see for yourself.